All right, so this is my first uh, transaction explanation. So I want to try to be as clear as possible. Let's try, let's try to do it. Now transactions are basically a creation of something called a transaction input and a transaction output. Okay, transaction input and a transaction output. All right, so I'm going to take this I put here. Okay, and I'm gonna create a transaction. This is a transaction right here. That's beautiful transaction right there. And transactions have two things, transaction input and transaction output. So they have a transaction input here. The red is the input and the blue is the output. Great, that will be a transaction. Now, what is a transaction input? A transaction input is what shows me that the person has the amount of money and that they own the money, okay? So imagine something like this. Imagine that the transaction, instead of being at the Bitcoin or the cryptocurrency transaction or whatever, imagine that is like a, like a box, okay? A box. So for example, we're gonna paint this box. I'm gonna paint it in, what the fuck? I'm gonna paint this box in, um, blue like that all right and this box we don't know what's inside of this box all right awesome now we don't know what's inside of this box let's talk about the inputs first let's say that you want to send me um 50 50 coins 50 nomad coins so what you would do is that you will put as an input as a transaction input you will show me that you have the money all right so maybe you have a Maybe you want to send me 20 Nomad Coins and you have a 50 uh, Nomad Coin bill, right? So what you do is that you give to this box, you give a 50 Nomad Coin bill, right? You give it as an input right here, okay? But you tell me, hey, I only want to, I only want to give to Nicholas, I only want to give him 10. So the transaction box is like, all right, no problem. Then this means that this transaction box is going to create two outputs. One output is gonna be for me, for Nicolas, and you're gonna give me 10, All right? And it's also going to create one output for you with 40, like this. This is how we can make as, uh, transactions on the blockchain, all right? All transactions have inputs and they all have outputs, okay? So this is how transaction works, with inputs and with outputs. That's what you will end up doing. You put 50 in and you tell the transaction, I wanna give him 10. And then what the transaction does is that it, it takes two, uh, it, it gives two uh, outputs. One output, 40 for me, because I only wanna give, 40 for you, because you only wanna give me 10, and 10 for me, because that's what you wanna give me, all right? Now, what happens, let's make, let's, let's continue on a different one. Motherfucker, what am I doing? Whoa, what the fuck? Okay, let's create one more. All right, so now you have a 40 transaction bill, all right? A four, 40 means that that's what's left for you and I have a 10. So on the next transaction, what is going on with this iPad? It's a very old iPad, I guess. It's so stupid, man. On the next transaction that you're gonna have, what we're going to do is that I am going to, you're going to have your 40, right? And I'm going to have my 10. And then you're gonna go back to the same box, right? The same box. And then you're gonna say, I wanna give Nicolas 20. So Nick, you're gonna end up with 20 as an output, right? And I am going to end up with 20. If you count, you will see that you gave me 10 before, and that you also gave me 20. So now I have 30, okay? This means that when I go to my balance, what basically the balance of an address is, is just a bunch on of uh, unspent transaction outputs. That is what a balance is. Unspent transaction outputs. So when you go to balance on the API, on Node.js, you're gonna go to balance, all right? This is a B, balance, 
right? When you go to balance, what we're gonna have, it's a list of all my transaction. It's like basically it's an array, all right? Of all my transaction outputs that I haven't spent. The 10 that you have given me before and the 20 that you have given me before. The 10 and the 20 that you have given me before, all right? That is how you can have transactions in a registry of a cryptocurrency without being on a database, okay? By putting everything on different blocks and changing the transaction outputs as um, with the transaction input, okay? The transaction input is very useful because that is what allows me to prove that I own the, that money, all right? And this will, this right now, I haven't talked about wallets yet. I haven't talked about public keys yet. Only talked about transactions. That's what we're going to implement on the next video, transactions only. And then we're going to learn how is the address the one that is responsible for unlocking this 50, um, this transaction input, all right? Because the address needs to unlock this some way. That's what we're going to learn, how to unlock this transaction input so we can put it on the box so it can make the transaction output both of them, okay? See you on the next video.